everyone. Thanks for tuning in and welcome back to the show where we analyze cultural trends, experiment with self-mastery, and challenge the status quo. I'm Morgan May, and today we're going down the rabbit hole and exploring hormonal birth control, femininity, and the relationship we have with our bodies. I'm joined by guests. I'm joined by guest Alexandra Moyant, an intuitive living coach who works with women to reconnect to their bodies and live in alignment with their being. Hi, Alex. Hi, Morgan. I'm <laughs> so excited to be here. So excited to have you here. Um, to everyone listening, for some background, Alex and I, we met in Denver um, about a year ago, I guess, at this point. We're both yeah. kind of East Coast girls and connected out there on a very on a variety of different um, things. And we have some interesting ideological differences, but like oddly we, we connect on so many other things and like, <laughs> and have just this like beautiful synergy. Alex is for any astrology heads, Alex is um, Sagittarius. I'm Gemini kind of is a vibe. Um, <laughs> such a vibe. <laughs> such a vibe. So yeah. Thank you so much. Alex. So, you know, a, a little bit more backstory. When I met Alex, um, Alex, was on hormonal birth control. She had an IUD in and it, it, you know, this kind of topic took up a lot of our conversation. I have been down this rabbit hole of kind of holistic psychiatry, um, you know, non hormonal birth control things, you know, um, holistic medicine in general. And recently I found out Alex took, got her IUD taken out. And so I'm so curious, Alex, to hear your story and, and just hear some, you know, differences, I guess, that you feel now, or, you know, if you want to kind of talk about the journey of, of, you know, before I'm now. Yeah, please, let's get into it. Um, yeah, so I got my IUD, like, at this point, like, six and a half years ago. I was on it for, like, five years by the time that it, like, I started to even think about taking it out, and it was great. Like everyone was like, why are you removing it? Like what's wrong with it? I'm like, no, it's like, it's fine. It's functioning as intended. I'm not pregnant. That's great. Um, I had like no negative side effects or any of the things that like, I've heard like so many horror stories, like even women in my family, but nothing like was wrong with it. I just at earlier this year, um, I just felt really out of touch, like with my body And I feel like for a really long time that felt fine because I was like focusing very heavily on like being in that kind of like headspace. And so like I kind of just ignored it, but it just like came to this point where I felt like I couldn't really ignore it anymore. Um, And so I started like toying with the idea of having it removed for a few months and I was like nervous about it. Um, And then finally I was just like, I knew like, my gut was just like, you need to go do this. And everyone thought I was a crazy person. The doctor was like, what are you going to do? And I was like, no, I I understand like the function of it. I just like, don't feel good. He was like, oh, what's wrong? I'm like, no, (laughs) you're not understanding this. Um, It was also a whole other thing because I had like new insurance. I had to go to a different doctor. And this Mm -hmm. man was just like unimpressed with my philosophy of having this removed for like no reason. Which I feel like speaks to, yeah. It happens in like mainstream medicine. If you come to them with anything that deviates from, you know, what, what they kind of prescribe or what everyone else is doing, it's like, they have no, there's no context for it. It's, you know, that was exactly what it was. It was just like a. It's kind of like a gaslight to you too. You're like, cause this is an authority. It's a doctor and they're telling you, they're asking, they're like treating you like you're nuts. And you're like, no, no, no. I know what I'm doing. No, I know. I know exactly. You're empowered yourself, but they make you feel crazy. And I'm glad that I waited honestly, because I think if I had gone earlier, it would have had that effect on me where I was Mm. like, oh, like, I don't know if I should go through with this, but I was like at that point, so sure. Yeah. Cause we were talking what I wanted. Yeah. Like I remember in October, I mean, starting in like August, September, like this was an ongoing conversation. And I remember like talking to you about it and, you know, you would like sit with it and like, you know, you, you didn't say no ever when I would like, you know, present you with like information or, or new uh, uh, opinion. It was like, you were sitting with it and thinking, thinking about it, but it sounds like it was kind of marinating and you were doing your own research and tuning into your body, which is what we should do as empowered, you yes. know, people. <laughs> like, Yeah. It just, it didn't feel right for me. And I feel like it was all like the stars felt like they aligned because like we started talking about it and then I started going to women's circle and 
obviously you sit in circle with these women for eight to 12 weeks. Mm -hmm. And so you, you feel the fluctuations and the like flow and ebb and flow of like, of being a woman. And like, you'll have, they'll come in, they'll be like, I'm having the best week ever. And like, then like two weeks later, they're like, I feel like shit. And it's like, (laughs) yes, because like, that is like you, we we are cyclical beings. And so like our bodies. And I was just like, I don't have that. Like, I just feel the same all the time. I just got chills everywhere when you said that. Yeah. And I was Um, like, I feel like I'm missing out on this, on this opportunity to like be in my body and experience what that actually feels like without just like being being on. Yeah. It felt like I was flatlined. Like I was just on this like baseline thing where I was just like, I could function all the time. Which is a male sex cycle. Like men can do that. I mean, they're wired to propagate the species. Like they can go at any point. They have to be flatlined so that they're always like ready to go. But as women, it's completely different. It's a completely different like physical experience, like in your body. Wait, okay. I'm so excited. So tell, so tell me like you're in this women's circle for how long? And then like eventually so I did the whole women's circle. I did all eight weeks and I was just your like, ID. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, I, I was just like, felt so solidified in it at the end I like felt this just like like you know that like transformative energy before like something big happens you're like yes like this is this is it and I was like okay I'm doing it and then I had like all the issues because I was like on a new insurance for work and so I was like oh and then I had to like figure out where to go and I was like (laughs) I was just like no I just want someone to take this out um so I finally went in and had it removed and I was fine. I use, um, something called natural cycles, which is like an app on my phone. Mm -hmm. And so I just like take my temperature in the morning and then you can also take like ovulation tests and it just like tracks your cycle for you. So like, I know what's happening. Yeah. Um, And so how long ago was that? How long ago did you get it taken out? March or end of February. Right in time for quarantine. <laughs> right in time. Yeah. So tell me, so it, did it take like a month? Because I've heard, I was pretty disconnected at, at the time that I got off birth control because I was on a bunch of other chemicals. So it was like a lot going on. But I've heard that it, in like a, between like one and three months, you kind of even out after kind of getting off of it. Yeah. So what was that like? My body like went back to like getting a regular period like quickly like it's been pretty much like a 28 day cycle. Like that hasn't really like. Wait, you didn't changed. have a 28 day cycle with your IUD? Oh, I didn't get my period for five years. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Wait, like, so I, what's that like? That's amazing. So you <laughs> have it back. Yeah. Tell I, like, you. immediately got it back. Oh my gosh. Uh, which is awesome. Yes. But it was, it was crazy. And it's been a really it's been an interesting journey because I tend to not be like a very emotional person in general. Like that's just like my general state of being. And so then like the three days around my period, like my partner will even be like, like he's just bewildered. Who is she? He's like, are you okay? And I'm like, no. What did I? Oh, I watched an Oreo commercial the other day and just started. Lost it. Yeah. (laughs) But that's amazing. Like, especially like they say, you know, PMS and right before your period, your hormones are the highest. So it's not like you're feeling things that you wouldn't normally feel. You're just feeling them on a way deeper level. It's like this, it's it's like the the metaphor of like a full moon shining a light on all the stuff that's already there. You just, you can feel it way more now. (laughs) Like, I feel like if I watched that video for the first time in like six days, mm-hmm. like I'd be, I would get chills and be like, wow, that's like a beautiful video. And then I would like move on with my life. <laughs> <laughs> but instead I cried. It was beautiful. Highly recommend it. I love it. it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just like, I, I can feel like the ebb and flow of my body so much more. Um, I'm a lot less patient the week before. I'm like, I have no patience for anyone. I'm like, you're an idiot. Why (laughs) are you I can't. Wait, so before your IUD, were you on the pill or were you just not on birth control at all and the IUD Mm -hmm. was the first? I was on and off a variety of different pills since I was like 17. 
Oh, um, so it's even beyond five years. This is the first time you're like without. I did get my period while I was on the pill though. So okay. like it was, but it still was like, and I a hundred percent did the bullshit that every 17 year old girl did, which was like, just skip. Oh yeah. Just skip the, the of your, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just skip those placebos, jump out, jump on over to the next one. I think I was like doing that, but I was doing it wrong. So I like started, like, I just messed it up. I was such a dumbass. <laughs> When I was like, yeah, it's, it's not crazy. responsible. Don't put, you know, hormones in 17 year old hands. Like couldn't handle it. Um, wait, so, so tell me like, um, what, what did it feel like? Like having your feel? So I've also heard, um, you know, your whole emotional life really changes. Like you just become more sensitive. You're less, um, you, you, have less resilience for like working all the time. For example, like I have a friend who got off birth control and she was like, I'm so glad I was on it when I was because now she's like killing it in her career. And she's like, I never would have been able to do that if I wasn't on it. No. You know? So yeah. I definitely feel that. that. <laughs> um, I told my friend the other day that I'm going to run for president next cycle. And my, uh, my platform is that women don't have to work on their periods. <laughs> It's amazing <laughs> because like, it's, it's completely changed. I'm like, Oh, whatever. Like for five years, I never got it. I was like, Oh, it's fine. Like I just like go, go, go all the time. Yeah. And now like my body is like, ma'am, no, <laughs> ma'am, we're not doing this tonight, right now. You're going to lay on that couch <laughs> and watch television and fall asleep at nine 30. That's what you're going to do today. Like you're, you, yeah. And so I feel like it had way more of an effect on me, I think, than I, So I was like, oh yeah, whatever. Okay, great. Like I'll get my period back and like, I'll feel more in touch with my body. But like, I actually like feel so much more in touch with my body. Like I experience the like ebbs and flows of my cycle. I experience like what that actually like feels like Mm -hmm. for me. Um, and like, it's, it's just so interesting how like every week of your cycle is like just so different, right? Like some weeks you're like, you're like I can take on the world and other weeks you're like super creative. And then like, mm-hmm. there's like parts of it where like, I just like want to like be at home alone and like do things like in my house. And it's just like much more, it's been like a lesson. I actually literally wrote about this this morning about rest, but like, it's been such a lesson in like actually listening to my body because mm-hmm. I just would bulldoze through everything yeah. because I could. There was no part of me that was like, oh, maybe you should rest. I was like, no, we could do this all day, every day. Like I was tired, but it wasn't like my body physically being like, no, (laughs) like this morning, my alarm went off and like, I do enjoy getting up early and like doing my morning rituals and stuff. Mm -hmm. I like dance and meditate and journal and stuff in the morning. And this morning my alarm went off at 5.45 and I was like, it wasn't even a snooze. I was like, that's a hard no. I'm turning the alarm off. (laughs) I'll wake up when I wake up. I woke up an hour later. I felt great. Amazing. But yeah, it's very, it's, it's a crazy experience. Alex, it feels like a homecoming. Like it feels like, welcome back. You know, like it feels like, like, like you're in flow. That's what it is. You know, I don't know. I just think it's like amazing. That's like it feels like that's what people like don't want women to be right. That like, they want, like, it would be nice if we could fit into this box that's already been created by like this, like hyper-masculine, like paradigm where like, you can go, go, go all the time. Right. That's just not really how our bodies function. Not how we work. No. It's so funny. So I fell into this like religious rabbit hole like in quarantine, quarantine got weird, whatever. And I, it 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 was a weird weird. time. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and I learned that the true Sabbath isn't actually like every Saturday, it's actually on a lunation. So when the moon is full and new and at, at the quarters, and the, I'm like getting chills talking about it, but the lunations, as you probably know, like correspond with our cycle. So when the moon is full, it looks like an egg. We're ovulating. When it's you know new, it's empty. We're emptying out. Um, and so I just you know, it, it's it's fascinating to hear you say that too about like our work life because it's like even nature has cycles. Like we're not meant to do all no. the things all the time. I mean, at least like women, right? Like with with female hormones and cycles and processes like um 
and I've kind of been learning that too. Like I've, you know, now I'm working from home and I have clients that, you know, versus having a boss, like I can kind of make my own schedule and I feel so good. Like I'm like in flow. Like I just have that dominion over my life. And, and that is very feminine. Um, so this is yeah. amazing. And also just everyone listening for context, Alex, when I met you, you were very in your masculine, right? Like we would talk about this all the time. I was kind of having this like feminine renaissance and you were very much like still this New York city, like, like, you know, embracing your masculine. We would have talks about it all the time. And I noticed your content changing on Instagram. And this was even before I, I knew you knew why. <laughs> yeah. And then, and now I'm just, okay. So tell me about, so you're in flow, you know, you're feeling the difference in your physical body. Like, tell me, has this been spilling over into like a feminine awakening, femininity awakening? Like I hear you dancing now. That's so feminine. Like, I don't think yes, I love it. I yeah. love early morning dance sessions. <laughs> um, yeah. So again, I just feel like everything like happened so like divinely. So yeah. I, um, had the IUD removed mm. and then I sat in another women's circle after which was like kind of weird because of quarantine so like I'm not going to count that one mm. it was great but it was like in person and then it was like oh everyone we can't do this so then it was like all digital and then it was like oh it's like nice out we could like sit in the park and it just was <laughs> there were like yeah. weird phases and it was like blocky yeah um but then after that I actually did um a coaching container with my coach and also, um, one of the women that I work for, mm -hmm. um, doing some marketing for her collective, um, that I just like love her and the mission and everything about it. Um, but it was called Fem Bodyman. It was like all about like, like your divine feminine and like working through like blocks that we have in like so many different ways and like different, like every week had like its own thing and it was like an intense three months like everyone who mm. went through it was like that was a lot I'm gonna like not do any more personal work for the rest of the year <laughs> capped out I'm good you. <laughs> um and so yeah it just felt like this like really like perfectly timed thing where like I took it out and like I was feeling more in touch with my body and then we like went into this container where like that was the whole premise was like getting in alignment and like getting in touch with your body and um yeah and we that was where I started doing the early I had done ecstatic dance with her before but it was kind of like mm -hmm. one-off things yeah. um but she would send out a playlist every week for us to dance to and I started it the first day and I was like I need I just feel so much more grounded when I have like space in the morning to like actually like sit with myself before I like do anything for the day and like not be on my phone drop um, in yeah yeah and so that's where the dancing started and then I just like added the meditation on myself um which has been also really really such a game changer um I just feel like so much more dropped into my body so yeah it was like it was just like a lot of things happening at once and then this morning I had this really interesting conversation with a friend of mine who was like kind of like went through that with me and mm -hmm. she was talking about how she like wants to get back to her like she wants to like reintegrate some of the like masculine energy too so that they like kind of like play together in like a more balanced way mm -hmm. and that she didn't know how to do that and I was like can I ask you a question she was like yeah of course I was like do you want to reintegrate like the masculine energy you had before mm -hmm. or do you want to like find like the divine masculine energy that you actually have within you and like move forward with that. I was like, cause I think the reason you're not able to like reintegrate it is cause like, it doesn't feel authentic anymore mm -hmm. because it was just like stuff you picked up in the office or whatever, yeah. like working around, like very, like, like in masculine environments. Yeah. yeah. And not even like, not even like the good, like space holding, like grounded masculine energy, the like high speed, like get shit done yeah. and like be really like hyper aggressive masculine energy mm -hmm. and so like I was like maybe you just like need to sit with what that actually like means for you moving forward because that's what I've felt for me at least like I still do very much resonate with like the masculine energy I just think it's like shifting the way it like 
it shows up, right? Like for me, mm-hmm. I think that shows up like when I get to be the space holder where like I'm holding a container for other people to be in versus like when I'm in like flow of like my feminine energy, like that mm-hmm. feels more like in my like divine feminine. And I think that they play together so nicely mm-hmm. when they're both like in their most elevated state. So interesting. Um yeah, I also feel like, like for for example, for me, holding space, that to me is feminine because like we're the void and we kind of set the tone for the space. So I think like it, my, my own journey of like femininity and masculinity, it was like a relearning even of like what these things even are and like boundary setting, right? I used to think that that was more masculine. That is very feminine, right? Like I used very to feminine. fear that and like, you know, kind of avoid it (laughs) caused a whole slew of issues in my life, but it's very feminine. I mean, that's, that's what femininity and feminine energy is. We have to set like the logic of the space, which are boundaries and like how to move in it. Um, so that's really interesting to hear you say. Um, so tell me, I'm curious about your partner. Has your partner like noticed a difference? Has your relationship noticed like shifted at all? Like you clearly are, you're shifting in like your um, routines and your relationship to your body, how you feel in your body. But like what has kind of your, your counterpart, your mirror been experiencing? Um, yeah, I think that our relationship has shifted. I think that COVID also like we've been in the house together. So there's been like a lot of work for us together of like how we show up for each other and like how we can support each other. Yeah. Um, and what that looks like and how it kind of like shifts day to day. Mm -hmm. Um, and a big part for me was like, especially growing up, like in a family that like comes from divorce in New York city, like I am very much like, I don't need help. And I don't like, okay, yes, I can do it all by myself, but like, I don't have to do it all by myself. You want to, that's very masculine, very independent. Like I don't need any help. Femininity is like, but do you want to? Yes. Yes. So that's been like a big shift for me is like, sometimes he'll be like, oh, like, do you want me to help you with that? And like, whereas before I'd be like, no, I've got it. Like now I'm like, yes, actually I would love that. Like I would love for someone else to do this. Like that would be great. And so that's definitely been a shift. And like, he's also, I think like been doing kind of like his own growth, which has, I think they've kind of like been happening at the same time. And so they're kind of like interweaving in the way that that we interact with each other. I love that. I, so I, I, (laughs) tell him I say hi. Um, I tuned into this interview, um, with the author of, um, men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Mm. And I'll drop it in the show notes for anyone curious. I thought it was a really fantastic interview, but in it, he talks about how, when men do things for women, their testosterone raises, if they're appreciated for it by the woman and conversely our estrogen raises. And so it creates a bonding. So it's like, when women, as, as women, cause I'm the same way. I mean, I, I, I mean, asking for help is like, I never do it. I, I mean, I, I have a hard time doing it and being vulnerable in that way. But when we do, it's like, it creates this, this intimacy that, you know, it's kind of barricaded if, I don't know, if we're, if we're really sitting in our independence or in our masculine, which I thought was really interesting. I don't know. Yeah, have you I felt more that. like closer, a little bit more intimate? Yeah, for sure. And just like, the willingness I think to show up for each other in like ways that feel good. It it does definitely like create that level of intimacy, right? Because like you're mm-hmm. showing up for each other, you're, you're actually like, and it's less of like what should happen and more of just like what feels like mm-hmm. good. And I think that that's been like a big theme of my life this year is just like being in like pleasure in my, in my life. Mm. And like that manifests itself in so many ways. I feel like pleasure has like this weird connotation where like everyone immediately is like, Oh, that's like very sexual, but like eating good food should be pleasurable. Like giving yourself a massage should be pleasurable. Like taking time to take care of yourself and like nourish yourself. Like all of that should feel good in your body. And so like 
what feels good for me? Like, what do I eat that feels good? What do I do in my relationship that feels good? What do I do for me that feels good? And like really making that a much bigger priority, I think has shifted me majorly and has also shifted the way we interact with each other. That's amazing. Yeah. Recently I learned when women, because because we set the tone of the space as women, if we are concerned with ourselves and our own pleasure, for example, our own boundaries, our own self-love, men connect to that. If we're not connected to that, they have nothing to like plug into. So if, if you know, you are pursuing that naturally, it's going to bring intimacy and closeness into your relationship because like that gets them off kind of in a way. It doesn't have to be sexual, but you know, um, which I just think is so interesting. I never knew that, I guess. I don't know, like that I could be selfish, quote unquote, you know, or like connected to myself Mm. and concerned with my own pleasure. And that actually helps my other relationships. Like that was really big for me. The word selfish is big, right? Like it's so like, oh, like she's being selfish, but like taking care of yourself, like isn't selfish, right? Like my friend is a wife and a mom of two boys. And like, sometimes she's just like, I feel bad, but like, I need to just like take a day for me. I'm like, tell me that you are not going to show up as such a better mom and such a better partner because you took care of yourself today. Yeah. And I know that's like exceptionally hard right now too. Cause like moms are like raising kids like, and also like trying to educate them while like they're I not know. teachers. Um, her kids just went back to school and she's like over the moon. <laughs> But it's hard and like carving that time and like actually dedicating time to just like nourish yourself, it does. It makes all of your other relationships feel better. And I think that's also something that like has happened more is mm-hmm. that like my partner sees me nourishing mm-hmm. myself and finding all these ways to like give to myself. And so like now he has found like ways to like give to himself too, which like obviously like then every, what's it? The rising tides raise all ships. Yes. I love that. I feel like you've always been the queen of that, of like, like selfishness, quote unquote, my little Sag princess. Like, you know, I I learned a lot actually, like spending a lot of time with you too, because it, and it doesn't hurt anyone else. It like helps everyone else, you know? And, um, and yeah, it's also interesting because you're, you're intuitive living coach and, you know, all about connecting with your body, we can't really live selfishly if we're not connected to ourselves, you know, cause you're not feeding yourself really in the way that you need. So I would imagine that doing that totally like leveled up everything. Oh, because 100%. You're able to and do I mean, that. I feel like that's how it should be. Right. Like, I feel like I want my coaches to have coaches. Like I want, like everyone yeah. should constantly be like leveling up in like whatever their like next mm-hmm. area is. Because like when you like move into that space, then like you're creating that space for everyone else who's like walking with you to like step into that part of their life too. Um, A thousand percent. Um, I feel like it's today, there's a lot of um, like, to me, that's like queen stuff, you know, when you're not afraid to like lift everyone else up and because you're secure and you know that like, I'm still going to be good. Like, and everyone else can come up with me and you're still serving yourself. And by doing that other people, you know, it's this multiplying Mm. effect versus a very constricting um, energy where you're, you know, a little bit more fragile. You don't want anyone else to have too much, um, which I think is also very feminine, but like truly like, like that's like the apex yeah, yeah. in my opinion you know I was just gonna say that because I know we talked about the like difference in like just like regular masculine and like divine masculine but the true is I mean the same is true for feminine right like I think mm-hmm. that like the unevolved feminine can very easily be like I want for me and for no one else because it's that like scarcity mindset whereas like yeah the evolved feminine is like no nah, there's room for all of us and competitive like, we're all leveling up together. yeah a thousand percent competitive too. Like I, something I, I recently learned, um, is that growing up, we want to fit in naturally and mm-hmm. we want to fit in with our girlfriends. So, or like with women, communities of women. So in order to do that though, sometimes you have to shrink parts of yourself because they're threatening or like guys like it too much. So we change and shift into like more people pleasing or, you know, less beautiful or whatever it is that we're like accepted by women, you know, which is so interesting. It's like this, this darker side of femininity, more toxic or whatever. Like I'm kind of trying to unlearn all these things because it's like it hasn't helped my romantic life at all right no and also like honestly 
I think it's true for everyone, right? Like it's mm-hmm. the difference. And like Brene Brown does like a really great job of explaining it, but it's like the difference between fitting in and belonging, mm-hmm. right? So like when we're younger, we just want to fit in. We're like, oh, like this is what everyone else does. So this is what I'm going to do. If I do this, this mm-hmm. person reacts negatively. Like, so yeah. I'm going to like shape shift my way into people liking me, but you never feel good about yourself because you're not really you. You're yeah. some like weird contorted thing that you've like maneuvered into and you're like if I do anything yeah. like if I move it all from here people are not going to like me whereas like belonging is like I'm going to be so mm. authentically aligned with who I am as a person and I'm going to attract the right people to me and then we're going to vibe and and it doesn't matter if I do something that maybe they're like oof I don't know about that or like that doesn't resonate with me because if you're both like your highest level self then like it doesn't matter like we don't have to agree on everything mm-hmm to respect each other and like know that we're both like on our own journeys to like whatever our highest self looks like. I love that. I think it's so true. I I read a quote the other day. It was like, um, what, when you conform, everybody likes you except for yourself. And Mm -hmm. so when you do that, it's like your self-esteem is the one that gets hit. And then it's like this self, this perpetuating cycle, um, that you have to then dig out of a journey I'm kind of on right now. Um, the long journey. But, yeah. <laughs> it's like a lifetime probably. Yeah. Cause there's um, so much that you've just like caked on and you're like, Oh, I like don't need any of this. <laughs> we that, can just like, get rid of that. The fact that you're here, like on this feminine journey now off of hormonal birth control, it's like completely different from when I knew you a year ago, you know, like that's a journey like that you're on now and it's changing who you are and your relationship with yourself and, yeah. you know, getting deeper and deeper and shedding all these layers you know and meat too you started eating meat again like just like I did like it's all these things yeah that get like get us closer to our authenticity and and then that even changes our preferences and like what we grab like I'm living in Hudson Valley now who would have guessed that I love that for you though it's so good I'm so happy (laughs) there's like foliage changing in front of me it's beautiful oh I know I that's like the one thing I like do very much miss about New York is like next fall. I like want to go home for like two weeks and just like be in the in the seasonal change. Cause I love fall in like upstate New York. It's, it's so beautiful. I have my best friend from childhood. Um, she moved, she, we grew up together in Jersey. She moved to um, California. She's been there for like nine years and she always comes home around like November Thanksgiving when after all the trees have already changed. And this year I like convinced her, I was like, Sam, it's beautiful. Like right now you have to come like early mid October. And she did. And the whole time she's just been like, Oh my gosh. Like it's, it's like a, you know, it's a thing. It's a vibe. Although the Aspens, Denver does have those changing Aspens. Oh, I do love the Aspens. I know. I love Denver so much. I know. It's a good one. Um, okay. I want to, okay. So I want to ask you if you had any advice for women, first, I want like the top three benefits that you have experienced coming off of birth control. Okay. So the top three benefits for me feel like I feel like number one is just that I feel so much more myself. I feel like, I don't know if this will resonate with other people, but I also like had taken, um, like anti-anxiety medication for a while. And like, when I took it, it was like this weird thing where like my inside felt like there was still something there, but the medication just kind of like cut it off. And that's how I felt about birth, like about being on the IUD too, was like, there was something like so alive within me that was just kind of like not being allowed to like express itself fully. And like the first three months off of it, like I, I, like my, I felt things in my body. Like I just, it was wild. And so I just feel so much more aligned with like that person like who she is like without being controlled by whatever the hormones were that were in my IUD Wait, can um, you can we touch on that just for one second oh, yeah. where was that where your your was your experience with medication correlated at all like were you on birth control also when when you were prescribed medication um probably mm-hmm. on and off yeah 
I never took it for very long because I didn't like any of the medication that they put me on. Um, but you were more like depressed and anxious that. while you were on birth control. Is that accurate? Oh, I would say that I, I don't feel, I mean, it's also hard for me to like know exactly what it is. I definitely feel less depressed and anxious now. I also have been going to acupuncture all year. And like, mm-hmm. I definitely think that that's been like a huge influence yeah. on me on my just like energy too. Like yeah. yesterday I went into acupuncture and I felt like super anxious. And like, after she put the needles in and I was like in this meditation, like I felt like in that, like, have you ever gotten to like the half sleeping, half awake state where you're just kind of like existing? Like yeah. I was there for the it's whole like time. Theta. It's like theta brainwaves. You're yeah. Like, and then when I, when I left, yeah. my sister called me and she was like, are you okay? Like, you just seem like so out of it. And I was like, I just like am right now. I don't know how else to explain that. I love it. Um, So I feel like that's also been a really big factor for me, but yeah, I definitely feel like my mental health feels a lot better because I think even though I'm having a lot more emotions than I was having before, Mm -hmm they feel true now. Mm. And so like, even if like I have to experience more sadness or more whatever, like the feeling is, I'm like, okay, like that's just where I'm at right now. And it feels very like in whatever this flow is that feels natural to me. And so it doesn't, it doesn't feel as like, it doesn't have that like depressed or like anxious feel as much anymore. I mean, I have had chronic anxiety my whole life. So like, We ebb and flow with it, but I definitely feel much more like grounded and in control of that aspect than I did before. Amazing. There are correlates, which is why I asked to um, women on birth control who are simultaneously prescribed antidepressants or anti-anxiety medication or both. It's like, I think 80 something percent, something crazy. I'll put the study in the show notes, but um, I I was just curious to see, because it feels like too, like... um, at least my experience with meds, when you're on them, you can't really feel what you're doing or what you're feeling and you can't release it. So when you're void of all these chemicals controlling you, would you say like you can process them (laughs) and then like move through them instead of having them like just, Mm -hmm. it's like um, band-aids and band-aids and layers of just stifling, like, and it stays in you. It's that the whole year has really been just like purging purging. Love yeah. it. I so also good. like went all in, in the most fully Sag cat fashion <laughs> of all time. So I had the IUD removed at the end of February. Okay. I quit smoking weed and drinking alcohol in March. I've had like one glass of wine since March. Cause I like went out on a date night and I was like, I deserve a glass of wine. Yeah. Love <laughs> like, it. I just, like, wine every, I was like, I am going to just feel everything about my existence and just like let it like move through me because I feel like that was like a huge part of it was just like this like stagnant energy that like wasn't actually like being processed and like even um my acupuncturist also does cupping Mm, and the first time she did cupping in March I was like Mm. purple for like five days after wow and since then every time it's like less and less purple for less and less long. I think the last time, like I didn't even have marks when I left Amazing, because it's just like, you're, you're, you're processing, like processing and releasing. Yes. That's what we're supposed to do. That's so good. That makes me so, so happy. Okay. That was number one. What are the two other benefits? <sighs> Honestly, this is like a weird benefit because I didn't think this was going to happen because growing up, I hated getting my period. I was like, this Mm -hmm. is the worst, but I actually like love it now. I'm like, oh, this is like a time for me to like rest and like, like recover. I also, um, I also use like a diva cup, which I think like also just makes me feel like even like more in tune with my body. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it feels so much easier. I don't know. Like something about when I was a teenager, I was like, this is like the worst thing that could possibly happen. Well, because everyone, that's what everyone is saying. And we're not taught this like sacred relationship to our body. And we're taught that it's, you know, a nuisance because we're still in school and, you know, having cramps and the pads. And it's like, it is, it's like a lot. 
at that time. But I think as we grow older, it's like, oh no, this is what makes me a woman. I can bring life into the world. And this is proof of that. Like, it's just like, wow, like, thank God, like having reverence for your body. Yes. (laughs) No, really. Especially if you are using like a a menstrual cup, it's like, you're like seeing all the information your body is producing. And it's just like a reminder of your power, like feminine power. That I didn't have this option. (laughs) as like it's literally the easiest thing I've ever I'm like oh like a walk (laughs) in heart like this is so great yeah Um, oh my gosh I love it yeah so that is like kind of an odd one because I was like oh whatever like the worst part about this was going to be getting my period again and it actually turned out to be like one of the best parts about it I was gonna say a lot of women are probably like oh then I don't have to deal with that again and then I can't have sex or you know I can't live my life but really it's like no you're it like enhances it like so much almost. It really, yeah, it really has. I feel like the third thing is probably just like the overall impact it's had on me and the relationships around me. Like it's crazy because usually the people who like see you often don't really like recognize when you're <clears throat> like shifting and growing and changing. Mm-hmm. And like some of the people who I see the most out here have commented on like what a shift they see in me Wow, from like a year ago to now. I mean, I do. And I think it helps when like, you don't see, I don't see you every day. So, you know, it's not this trickle. It's like, no, I knew you when you were really in your masculine and now you're like, like all feminine, like booty shots. <laughs> I love it on social. No, it's your whole feminine power. I'm obsessed. So, okay. If you were to give like warning, cause I know it's, it could be intimidating, mm-hmm. you know, like changing something that you've been doing for five, 10 years, like yeah. things to kind of look out for, for example, like I would probably say you're going to start feeling things again and it might be yes. intense, but it's good. Cause it's like, you're going to feel things and then you're mm-hmm. going to acclimate, you know? So what, what are maybe two or three, like warning precaution or just kind of be mindful of you know for women who are considering is specific to the IUD I was on and no one told me about it and I had to look it up after because I thought I was going insane um there's something called the Mirena crash which is once you take this specific IUD out like I have never been that depressed it was like I'm really lucky it was only like three days within the first, like, I think it was like my first cycle. There was like three days where I was just like depressed. Your doctor didn't tell you? No. Of course not. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> um, you might no. not kill yourself. <laughs> so just stay at home with a chaperone. Wow. Um, and so I was just like hysterically crying. I was like so upset. And it's like that depression, like feeling where like you don't know what's happening. Like there's, you're not sad about anything. You're just like, like I felt despair. Like I felt like there was like no, like it was terrible. And Mm. I'm apparently lucky. Like some people get it for longer than that. Like it could happen for like more than one month, but just like knowing that that is a thing. Yeah. Those ones I knew I was like, Oh, okay. Like at least I I don't feel crazy. Like this is my body, like reacclimating to not having the hormones all the time. And like, it just needs to like readjust. And so like, it gave me perspective, but the first wow. like two days when I had no idea, like I was terrified. I was like, what is happening to me? Wow. I didn't this even, is... wow. <laughs> obviously like didn't even think about it. Oh, like, but well, well you don't it, cause you're really... in it. Yeah. yeah. I was like, oh, I'm just like depressed. And like, like I said, I have struggled with anxiety my whole life and I had really bad depression when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. And so it was really terrifying to feel like I was like right back there for like, no reason. Cause like I was still taking really good care of myself. Mm-hmm. And I think it was actually Byron who like put two into, I think he like looked it up and he was like, I found out that like, if, when you go off this specific, like IUD, it's like, and I was like, Oh my God, thank you for telling me why so would my doctor not inform me that this was a side effect of that? Like, <laughs> this is what I mean. Like you, you have to, to everyone listening, this is such a, a crucial example of why we need to be empowered consumers. Like, cause you're, you cannot trust other people. The only thing you can control is yourself. So like you can't trust your doctor to give you all the information, especially if it's like a mainstream doctor who doesn't <clears throat> usually take IUDs out just because someone wants to, or like, you know, it's just yeah, crazy. And, and the thing like- is, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. 
I was just going to say, especially when it comes to things like hormones and medication and anything having a, an impact on your mental health, which by the way, hormones totally do. The thing is when we're in a, a mood state, it, we, there's an, um, uh, phenomena or an effect called affective memory loss, where we legitimately don't remember feeling any other way. So we don't know that we're really depressed and we can't like see it because we're in it. So it's so crucial to have objective information or have people who are not in your subjective mm -hmm. reality, like your boyfriend to be like, Hey, like, you know, like my therapist was like that for me when I was going through these med trials, trying to figure things out and go spiraling in my apartment for like three days. Like, okay, let's connect some dots here. But it's just so, it's so, that's crucial information that. Yeah. And yeah. I would say like, look up your IUD specifically. Cause mm -hmm. I think that was my mistake was I kind of just Googled before I took it out, like things to look out for when you go off your IUD. And there were like, like, yeah, people were like, yeah, you're going to feel things more intensely. Like your cycle might take a while to come back to normal. Like kind of just like the more generic things. And I was like, oh great. That like sounds doable. And what I didn't look up like mine specifically. Well, because yeah. like copper IUDs, I imagine have a very different because you're not yeah. really there's not like any hormones, so it's like a very different process. Right. Um, and again, it just like didn't occur to me to look up mine specifically. Um, because if you do, like, if you Google like taking out a marine IUD, like, there's all there. this information about like. But even that's crash, crucial information your doctor could have shared with you. Like, um, so that's, that's really, really good tip. Is there anything else you would recommend or like people to just keep a pulse on or just to brace yourself for? Because something like that, like it's important. Cause look, if someone didn't know that, or if you didn't have Byron, it would be like, oh my gosh, do I need this? Did I make a mistake? You yeah. know? And then like it's terrifying. Yeah. Or like, am I, yeah. Do I need medication? You know, unless you know what you're in for and you're empowered with knowledge yeah um other things I would say are just like give it time honestly mm -hmm. it took a while to like level out um for me at least like figuring out what that what that meant what my like, cycle was going to be like um especially because I immediately started the using the app as like the day after I took it out mm -hmm. um and so like knowing that like your cycle is like not going to be regular for the first few months so like if you're in a relationship and not trying to get pregnant like you should use protection right um, yeah because like the app a gets more like it knows more once it knows you better right when it knows like what your temperature cycle looks like and when you start mm -hmm. taking the like ovulation test like then it actually knows more about your body but when you first start, it'll tell you like, oh, it's like green, but it'll, and it like lets you know, it's like, this is very, like we're guessing at this point. Cause like for the first few months, it just like takes a while to kind of like even out. Mm -hmm. And mine like was really normal for the first few months. And then I had like two months where it was kind of like wonky and came a little early mm -hmm. and then it like went back to normal after that. So I think, yeah, just be patient with it. Um, and then also like enjoy like enjoy the ride, like see what happens because like there, it feels like there can just be so much growth in like getting back into your body, especially for those of us who like are on an IUD. And like, at that point I was five years in, I was kind of like, Oh, I'll just like wait till they remove it. Cause it was supposed to come out after five years. Um, I was like, and then I'll just like see how I feel. And if I want to get another one in, and they were like, and then when I went in for my like annual checkup, they were like, oh no, like it's been approved for eight years now. So you can leave it. And that's when I was like, oh, maybe I'm just going to have to like choose to take this out. But like, there could be people who have been on it for that long. Yeah. And so like getting back in touch with like who you are without all those hormones pumping through your body is like such a journey. And so I would, yeah, just enjoy it. That's so good. Um, I love that, Alex. Like, it's like very inspirational and you seem like, like mega, like just in your power, you know, you were always really powerful. Like, you know, you were always like had an incredible mind and, and energy, but I just, I don't know. It's this other component. It's, I think it's this femininity thing. Like, you know, you're just so comfortable and like in it. And it's just, it's amazing to see. I love it. I feel like as women, we're like so often told that like 
our femininity like isn't powerful right that like it is like weak or like not because like so, like our society is like built around like a very masculine structure and so like that is what's seen as strong whereas mm-hmm. like I'm sorry, but I've seen men get the flu. Like they would not hang if they had to get their period <laughs> once a month. Like there is so much strength and power. Like we bring life into this world. Like there is so much strength in our femininity. And mm-hmm. I feel like <clears throat> I've always felt like a powerful person. I just feel like before it was like very much like channeled through like a more like masculine energy. And I'm, mm-hmm. I'm feeling very empowered in, in my feminine. I love it. Yeah. I was thinking about this. I think femininity is actually more powerful than masculinity. And this is not a feminist stance or anything. Like I, I love men. I don't want to dominate men or like, I don't think women are better than men, but I do. If you think about it, men they're I mean, physically they're, they're way stronger. They are very dominant. Like I love, I love masculinity, like truly love it. But what are men's weakness? What is it? It's women. It's femininity. Like a beautiful woman walks into a room with all men. What do they do? They, they lose it. They look at her. You know, it's like now they're all trying to get her attention, whatever. Femininity is like the weakness, the kryptonite of masculinity. So mm-hmm. who controls masculinity? It's like femininity. It's this undercurrent. It's like more silent in flow kind of yeah. power versus like in your face, you know, and, and that is p- powerful. It's different and complimentary and, you know, it's yes. not front, front and center like masculinity is, but it's needed. It's like, mm-hmm. it's like the underpinnings. It's the void that all the masculine energy like works with it. So yeah, I posted something the other day and it was like about how like everyone who's like talking about like wanting to see like a better future, how mm-hmm. like it really is the divine masculine and the divine feminine, like playing together in like their most true form. Right. Mm -hmm. Because like, to your point, like, yes, like masculine and energy can be really strong. It can be really grounded and like powerful and energetic. Mm -hmm. And like, I love that energy, but I think the problem is that for so long, like that has been the barometer for strength Mm -hmm. and like there is such a complementary nature, like you were saying to like powerful feminine energy. It Mm -hmm. is. And like, even if you do like archetypal like work where you're like working with like different feminine archetypes, like Mm -hmm. some of them are so much more like soft and like, yeah. And that is part of feminine power. And then some of them are like just these like badass, powerful archetype warriors because there is so much of this like energetic play. And I just feel like it would be so beautiful if individually we could get to that place where our masculine energy and feminine energy plays well together. And then like societally where those things like could actually like complement each other in ways that felt organic and like true and good for us. I completely agree. And I think it's actually our, like, think about it. If, if women are the void in the space, like that means we are setting the tone and we are dictating how we're being treated, how we're interacting Mm -hmm. with the masculine. So like I look at it even historically and there was a huge, and I know you and I may differ, but actually maybe, maybe it's different now that you're kind of on this journey. But I think like with the, this wave of feminism, for example, it, it kind of stripped away the natural value that women have intrinsically. Like we can bring life into the world where the emotional labor, like things like that. And it brought us into the workforce and in this very masculine paradigm and kind of diminished like us as women and, and these, these very different skill sets or values that we bring. And I see, And then once you do that, it causes a big imbalance, right? And then men come to us differently and treat us differently. And now, anyways, I think that there, I do see a very big resurgence of women reconnecting and, you know, the, the space shifting a little bit. Like, I think it starts with us and, and us setting the logic and the tone for how, like even in dating, like women are the boundary, like men will treat you based on how you're treating yourself, how you're allowing them to treat you. Right. So it's like, once we make that shift as women, like everything kind of follows if, if we're the void, which, you know, archetypally they kind of are. So. Yeah. I think I would even say that like my, 
my like I am very much a feminist in the sense that I believe that like men and women deserve equal access to things Mm -hmm. I think where it goes wrong at least for me is when I feel like equal access is misinterpreted as equal existence Mm -hmm. because like I don't think men and women are the same I don't think women and women are like there's (laughs) such a variety of human beings like in the world and like so I, I I do think that there's like this it feels like there's like a disconnect between those things for me. Like I want, like, yes, I want women to be able to do anything that men are able to do in, in an equal way. That doesn't mean I think it should be done in the same way. Like I think, like I was saying, like, I think there is beauty in both of their strengths. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that they like are. And I think when they play together in their strengths, like magic happens. I think when they, when like one is diminished or the other is diminished, that's when we get into this like weird place where like, we're not actually like functioning in like our divine capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I don't know. I feel like for me anyway, like a big part of it has also been like healing my own like personal rage. And I've been, um, I'm actually literally reading this chapter right now of women who run with the wolves. Mm -hmm. I haven't read it is so good um I have it I haven't read it though um and so this chapter is all about like feminine rage and mm-hmm. how oftentimes what happens is like and I think this is where that like disparity kind of comes into play right where like mm-hmm. we feel that rage and then for so long we were told to just like not feel it and she mm-hmm. was like no she was like it's just not about like lashing out with it right like it's about like feeling it and like we were talking about like processing it through your body like moving the rage through so it can like catalyze like your growth and like you can fight for the things that you believe in and you can like Mm -hmm. be you can do those things without the anger being the driving force right Mm -hmm. where like you are in your like strength and your power and like you are catalyzing change in that way and I think that that's been like a big one for me because I feel like kind of just like aggression felt like very like masculine even though like I would argue that's probably not like divine masculine energy Mm -hmm. um and so that was like a big part of my like energetics was just like feeling anger and like now when I feel that anger I feel like instead of being like a viper with it it's Mm -hmm. more like oh like let me process it through me and see what I can how I can move through it and kind of like come out of it in a as a different person so Mm -hmm. I can like move forward in a way that feels good but where I'm not just like it's not just like a constant fire that's being stoked that's amazing I I, I, maybe that's the 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 difference that I see in you because you I mean you're like New York City girl you know like I I feel like (laughs) if you cut me off on the LIE I might not be so kind (laughs) no I love it but that was totally like part of like like guys would piss you off really quickly, you know? Like I just mm-hmm. remember that. And like, you've told me some insane stories that like I love and I love about you. But but hearing this journey, I think is really, um, because yeah, I mean, look, anger is human, whether it's masculine or feminine, like whatever, it's human. And I think when it's not processed, it manifests in things like rage when you're not, it's not flowing through you and it manifests as being trigger happy or lashing out or like, you know, even hatred towards men, you know, or just like anger, like underlying anger. And I feel like, like everything we've been talking about, like you feeling things in a more flowing way, being able to actually take an emotion and process it. I can imagine that's going to have like completely transformative effects on, on everything, how you like move through the world, how you move with men, you know, because because you're frankly in control. Like this is a lesson in self mastery. If we're not processing our feelings, especially mm. feelings like anger, like they manifest in different ways. They manifest in tension. They manifest yeah. in anxiety. They manifest in. I mean, in my case, I, I hated men at one point. You know, like I did. Um, I think that that's a very normal part of mm-hmm. growing up as a woman because there like comes a point where you're just like angry at everything that's happened to you. Mm -hmm. And so you get angry. Right. And like, I definitely was really angry. And I think that like, for me, it's just been about like 
processing through that anger. And that doesn't mean like you have to forgive people for what they did. It just means that like, I no longer have to carry that inside of me. Because you are in control that at the end of the day, like you may not, you're not, you're not um, at fault necessarily for what happened to you, but it's your responsibility to take to, yeah, a hundred percent. It's like everything in our life. Like I, I used to, up until very recently, like subcon, like I've, I feel like I, I've come to terms with my past and upbringing, whatever, but like I was still living in a way that I knew wasn't my best self. And subconsciously it was like, oh, because this happened when I was six or like my mom was like this, but none of that shit actually matters <laughs> because I'm in control. I'm an adult now. Like, you know, it, like, sure. The, bad things happen. Sure. Like, you know, you could have found yourself in situations that totally were not ideal. You wouldn't have wished on your worst enemy, but you know, what, what do you do with it now? You can always choose whatever life you want. If you want to ha- to keep having that impact you negatively, you know, don't do the work. If you, if you don't, if you really want to be a true self master and released from these chains and, you know, you not have these people impact your life any more negatively than they already have, like do the work process and and move forward, you know? Yeah. I feel like for me, it's important to acknowledge like where it's coming from in so far as like, Oh, that's a trigger for me. Right. So like I can be aware of it moving forward. Like if that happens, like for me, if like men come up behind me quickly and I don't know, especially like this happens often now that I run Mm -hmm. and I'm not very fast. (laughs) people passing yes. <laughs> um, like I know that is triggering yeah. for me and so like what can I do to like help mitigate the like effects of that mm-hmm. but I don't think I think and this is what you feel like you were getting at is like it 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 shouldn't be the excuse right like oh I'm like this because whereas like now I'm like okay I'm feeling triggered in this moment but like I can like show love to that version of myself and like help her reintegrate into like the version of me that exists now and like yes. that's the only way that like I'm ever going to heal it's so true. It's so true. And even just having that relationship to yourself, like is hugely trans- transformative. Like I, st- when I started treating my, my body as like a separate thing to myself almost like, or like my inner child. And I started being like, Morgan, you're safe. Like, I know you were just triggered, like holding myself, like talking to myself, like as if I was a separate entity almost it was because huge. It yeah. I feel, I feel like, right? especially like- with trauma, you know, because you Morgan is not being triggered by like, you're fine. Right. Yeah. It's, it's the version of you that experienced it. That's being triggered by it. And so uh, whether that's six-year-old you or 12-year-old you or 18-year-old you or whatever, like yeah. that's the version who needs like to be like brought back into the fold. It's almost like when that instance happens, it like fractures off mm-hmm. and like your job of like healing is the like reintegration of, of that. I've also done some like um, like child meditations of like shadow work where like Mm. they like walk you into this building and it like kind of like drops you in and then you walk into a room and like a version of yourself shows up and it's always really interesting that it's like never who I expect but it's like a younger version of me who like needs something healed wow wait talk about that let's talk about shadow work you're doing shadow work now this oh, makes me so happy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Is that what, so is that how it looks for you? It's like, um, different meditations. Is it sometimes Oops. it's meditation. Sometimes it's journaling. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it's like more like processing in like the groups. Like I definitely did a lot of it in the embodiment where like I, mm-hmm. it was group coaching. So it wasn't like one person every week, but like mm-hmm. there would be weeks that were like more visceral for a person or another person and so we would get space within the container to kind of like share and get feedback from the other people and our coach and like just hear from people um I feel like for me group work is really healing and helpful as like the the container that like for to be like the container that I'm in Mm -hmm. and then I feel like for me I have to go off and do things on my own to like process through it afterwards so like I'll like get a nugget from there and I'm like, oh, I have to like go do that. Like I'm in um, another container right now called uh, Sacred Slut and it's like all about like the divine like sexual part of you that's like kind Mm -hmm. of like also the same thing, like keeps getting fractured off as like we grow up and it's just really about like reintegrating her as like one of the archetypes, right? There's like Mm -hmm. a variety of them. And so we had 
a session two weeks ago and I had this like moment of clarity where I was like, I feel like an energetic block around this. And so I like took that with me. And then the next day I did like, um, I did like an intentional like candle lighting and like wrote in my journal about like what I wanted. And then I did like a meditation and I like physically could feel like an unlocking in my body. It was a really beautiful meditation. You like sit and like see a path and you see like all the things that are kind of like blocking the path, like the foliage. And then like you with your mind, like see it open up further and further and further. And it's like clearing the blockages, like on whatever your path, your personal path is. Do you cry a lot? Sometimes. so much when I was doing my, like, with like, it was like Sometimes it's like, yeah. Um. Sometimes Do you like go right. back to these like instances and like, like, I feel like with my own shadow work, I would like write, like writing was my kind of work and I would like mm-hmm. have a whole ritual and I like would literally go back to whatever event or I just ask my subconscious to like guide me and I would like write out an event, but like with what I know now and like I was able to like process things and like forgive, like, you know, with like this new mind and it it like ch- changed my whole life. Like it was so much more integrated. And like you were saying, like way less angry, way less anxious. I'm like virtually not even anxious anymore. It's like the most important work that you'll ever do. Yeah. Um, wow. um I do. So usually I do the guided meditation. Okay. Um, I have like a bunch that I do, but if there's like a specific thing that I'm trying to get at, I'll usually yeah. do the um, one where you like take the elevator and then you like walk and you like meet a version of you and she like the guided meditation will ask you questions to ask that version and you just kind of like let your subconscious answer the question so like what do I need to know like what did I not do for you then that like you needed and there's like three or four other questions it's like 16 minutes total and then it like it they like walk you out of the building and then when I like sit up I immediately Mm -hmm. journal like everything that came up so that I know like things that I need to like work through or things that are like triggering or that like are even just things that I can tell myself right if like that version of me felt that like I wasn't being authentic and I didn't feel like loved because I was like trying to be a version of myself that I wasn't Mm -hmm. then like that's good information of like what that version of me needs to hear right Mm -hmm. she needs to hear that like she's worthy and loved no matter what that she doesn't have to like contort herself into you know Alex Cirque du Soleil shapes yeah but this is such an intense correlation like basically you were on birth control that stifled and chemically shut down emotional parts of you which this is shadow work for anyone who doesn't know what shadow work is it's like going to these unseen parts of yourself and unearthing them and shining a light on them and feeling them and integrating them and finally allowing them to move through you because when we're not when we don't do that work that stuff stays in you and like exactly what we were saying before which led to this whole rabbit hole like you it manifests in different ways in rage Mm -hmm. and anxiety in in not being able to live fully intuitively because you're living as a fraction of yourself you know like there's all this love and light talk and you know you know positive thinking and that's all like wonderful but like if you're not addressing if you're either chemically shoving or you know by default like not experiencing your stuff like you're not really living in your fullness and can't really, you know, achieve self mastery or be happy or integrated or intuitive at all. So Alex, like this is like a, it's like very symbolic, you know, finally, like you have nothing inhibiting you, you know, it's like, okay, there's all the, all the barriers are like open and you're like going there. It's amazing. Like, yeah. And for the first time it's, I feel like for so long, I I feel like this might resonate with you too. Like, Mm -hmm. I did the work in therapy, which is like, so like heady and like, it's been really helpful and I'm grateful for all of the wonderful therapists that I've had who've (laughs) helped me work through all the things. Yeah. Yeah. But there was such a missing component and it was just that it wasn't processed and like integrated in my body. Like there was so much that was just like clouded and stifled and like it needed to be worked through. Like you can think through it all you want. If you're not like processing it physically, it's just like, it doesn't feel the same. 
It's so true. Or even like subconsciously, like I feel like we and I think we're similar. Maybe it's like the cap or something, but like I intellectualize my feelings and I wanted to know the theories behind things and, and it helps on some level, but on like the level of like, okay, integrating it and having it change your life, you know, like literally change your life, change how you move through the world. That stuff comes with the shadow work in my opinion and like diving into your subconscious and frankly, like not being afraid of it anymore. Like, I feel like it, it's scary. Like you've gone through stuff. That's like, you why, why the hell would you ever want to relive that stuff? Like I've gone through stuff where it's like, okay, I'm going to sit and like choose to write about it now and like go through it. But it's just like, you have to do it because other you owe it to yourself. You know, like those parts are part of you. Yeah. I mean, whether you, you like it or not, yes, you are worth the effort it takes to go through those things. And mm-hmm. also you not wanting to relive it does not mean it's not there, right? Like right. we have said this a few times now, it will manifest in other ways. Yeah. And if you're not like letting it process, it's going to, it's, you're like a pressure cooker. Like it's going to explode somewhere. And I mean, not only that, but it's going to manifest in a bad partnership, bad life decisions, things that you're going to regret later because it's like, especially with trauma or emotions that stem from trauma, they permeate and manifest through every area of your life until you deal with it. So like in my case, just dated the most awful men for years, you know, until I like nipped it until I was like, okay, like, let's see. Cause you know, partnerships, for example, are, yeah, they're mirrors into unseen parts of yourself. So it's like, if you really want the best, your greatest version, live the best life in your case, especially like live feeling the best possible and most intuitive, most connected to yourself. Like it's not like we have a choice. We don't have a choice. You could choose to do the love and light thing and whatever, but it's like, it's, it's You're just always all the underlying things. a thousand percent. Um, wow. I'm so thrilled to hear that. And for this journey, like I feel like I kind of was in my shadow work, like refeeling all my stuff when I was in Denver. Um, And like, it's just like after it's all done too. Not that we're ever done doing the work, but it's just like, you can, I'm like breathing. Like it was, it's like a life that I never knew was really like possible. So I just, I'm like so full send on on it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think we're ever done, but I do think there's like that initial barrier to entry, right? Where you're like, I don't know about that. And like once (laughs) you're in it, then it feels like you're like, you're in it. You're like, Mm -hmm. and it may look different, you know, like one week you might be processing like trauma from your childhood. One week you might be processing like money blocks or like, Mm -hmm. like your relationship with food or your relationship with like a million things in your life. And so Mm -hmm. like that will always like change, but it feels like there's that initial hurdle of like, oh, I just need to start doing this like deep divey work. And frankly, that doesn't happen until you don't have a choice. Like I did that when it was like, I had to do it. Like I wasn't not going to do it. Like my body, everything was like pushing me in that direction. It's like you, you probably went off birth control and it was just like, okay, like there's stuff I have to move through it and work through it. And so like now we're doing shadow work because I can't not do that. Um, And I think to your point, like at least for me, like my body was like guiding me there. Yeah. Like that was like, the, like you shouldn't be on birth control. Like there was no reason for me. There was no logical reason for me mm-hmm. to want to like up, like overhaul my whole life. But like something about it just felt like it like needed to happen for this like bigger overall transformation to take place. God, yes. Okay, so in closing, would you or would you not recommend um, a woman who's listening, if she's on birth control, would you recommend? Are getting off birth control and um exactly why the main thing I feel like I mean I want women to do what feels best in their bodies and like mm-hmm. honestly 22 year old me would listen to 29 year old me and be like no <laughs> right so funny so like and like your friend too right she's like oh like I was on birth control and I like hustled and like now I'm good because like I can chill like I right. think that there's like for me it's like you should feel what feels right for you what I mm-hmm. will say is if you even have like an inkling that you don't want to be on it I would listen to that 
like subtle push because like there's a reason why and there are other ways to like not get pregnant. Sure you're not, yeah, <laughs> you don't turn into a mom sooner than you want to much to my own mother's chagrin um she, she's ready she wants it she's got baby fever i love if your mom she doesn't have a baby onesie hiding in her house somewhere like in preparation i would be shocked honestly <laughs> that's how i feel about it. oh my god i love um, it but like yeah if that if that's like you're like not ready for that yet which is mm-hmm. how i feel like there are other ways to to handle that um like but the, if you just, the trade-off is worth it you would say like yeah well it. it's like you think about it now you're measuring your temperature but like the benefits that you get it's worth it so like actually it's kind of a great thing because I leave the thermometer over my phone and so when I wake up I like take it and then it's like honestly even like a reminder to me like oh like you're gonna put the temperature in and then you're gonna turn your phone off and like go do your like morning thing like you're not gonna be on, like you're not just gonna like pick it up and mindlessly start scrolling. it's a routine that connects you to your body first thing in the morning great yeah <laughs> I love it. Well, Alex, this was spectacular. You're such a great guest. Amazing conversation, amazing insight, amazing experience. Um, So grateful to know you. I'm so happy to like, I don't know, see you on this path and and continue to kind of keep a pulse on where it's taking you. Thank you for having me. This was wonderful. I, yeah, I feel like it's just like totally changed my life. And so being able to share that journey with other women who may be considering it feels really important. Amazing. Oh, tell these women listening right now, where can people find you? Oh, um, you can find me on Instagram at Milan warrior princess, M O L L O N. Um, and my website is alexandramilan.com. Love it. Well, thank you so much again. And we'll see you next time here on Morgan. May I? Bye.